Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer. I'm glad you're here. I'm very excited because I have a very unique opportunity for you today. Today I am sharing a guest artist who isn't only an artist who makes cards, but she is a co-founder of a company and a stamp designer. So you get a unique perspective as you learn these cards. We have Jen Raza from Altenew, and she has two cards to share with you. She's going to show you all the steps along the way, but better yet, she's going to give you additional ideas. So I really feel this is packed full of a lot of information. I also think it is a unique perspective that we don't often get to hear. Jen is one of my favorite humans and creators, so I'm glad she is here today. Okay, let's get started with Jen's creations. Hello there, everyone. My name is Jen Raza, and I am one of the co-founders over at Altenew. In addition to co-founding the company, I also do a lot of the product design and I'm on the product development team. So I do wear many hats over at Altenew, and I am so excited to be able to share some of our products here at Jennifer McGuire's channel. And a huge thank you to Jennifer for allowing me to come over and share some cards with you and give you a little idea of some of our holiday products that we just recently released in early October. Now, if you do make holiday cards, um, I feel like there's a lot of products here that you won't wanna miss. And also, if you just like doing fun seasonal winter cards, there's gonna be something here for you as well. Now today, I'm going to be focusing on two products. This is the Festive Greenery Bundle, and it comes with the Festive Greenery Botanical 3D Embossing Folder, and you also have the stencil set. And this is the Festive Greenery Builder Stencil Set. Now, these have been designed so that you can use either independently, or you can combine them together to get some different results. And that's what we're gonna play around with today. Now, I do have some other products from this same October release that I'm going to be using. And for this first card, I'm gonna be using the Linear Life Poinsettias stamp set, which also comes with a die set and its own simple coloring stencil set. So you have the die set here, which cuts out each of the poinsettias and the sentiments. We know we've gotten a lot of requests from people to have those sentiments available. So we do start including those more and more in these upcoming releases. So be sure to check that out because that's kind of becoming more of the norm for our larger sentiments. Smaller sentiments for the most part, probably won't have that. There are some exceptions, but just check them out and this will save you from having to do fussy cutting on all of your uh, stamp sets for your sentiments. And here is the Linear Life Poinsettias Simple Coloring Stencil. And it's just one single stencil and it's going to add a lot of color to the centers of your leaves and to your poinsettias. It doesn't color them in all the way fully and that was done intentionally because of the style of this design. This is a single line art flower, which means each one is designed to be one continuous line. And it's a really popular design trend nowadays and in a lot of graphic design to have these like kind of minimalist single line illustrations. So that's what we have here and I'll be using this as well. My first card is going to start with the embossing folder and I'm going to use the folder just on its own to get a lot of texture in the background of my card. So what I'm going to do is grab a panel of white cardstock. This is just solar white 80 pound cardstock. I'm going to place it in my folder just like this and I'm going to go ahead and run that through my die cut machine making sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for a 3D embossing folder. You will want to check that because a regular embossing folder and a 3D embossing folder will have different sandwiches so you want to make sure you're using the correct one so you get the right depth in your texture. And you can see here how beautiful that festive greenery background is. Now remember, you can add more color or any color if you want to use the coordinating stencils, which I will show you later how we can use those stencils. But right now, I'm just going to keep this white on white to be a really beautiful textured background. And it's going to give some interest behind the poinsettias that we're about to stamp, but it's not going to completely distract your eye because it is just a white background. So let me set this off to the side and we'll pull out the stamp set. 
And I'm also going to grab my trusty stamp wheel. Now, this is an amazing stamping tool. If you haven't seen it in action before, you'll get to see a little bit today, but I really encourage you to check out some of the videos that our team and guest designers and customers have put out with this amazing tool. And we do have a class coming up with Simon Hurley featuring the stamp wheel. So you might wanna check that out as well. Now I'm just going to take my cardstock, just a spare piece, and I'm not worried about where I'm gonna stamp these poinsettias, and that's because we're gonna die cut them out from this paper anyway. So I don't even need to worry about centering the cardstock on my stamp wheel. We do have alignment stencils that are really easy to use if that's something that you wanna try to get like wreath building, or if you wanna make a symmetrical design, you can do that. But for this purpose, I'm just going to be stamping three different uh, three different flowers and I'll be die cutting them out so I can just leave this as is anywhere I place it on my sticky mat and in addition to the flowers I'm also going to cut the leaves and I might do two of each leaf just so that I can really play around with the arrangement and make sure that I can create a really full looking Hard. So I don't want to have sparse areas in the flower arrangement. Now as I'm setting these up, I am going to need another piece of cardstock. So I'm going to place the two points that is there, leaving some space for the die cutting. So our dies, for the most part, again this is not every case, but mostly they have a one millimeter border around the edge. So just keep that in mind. If you place these too close, you might not be able to have space to accommodate the dies. All right, so now I'm just gonna pick these up with the plate of my stamp wheel, making sure to grab them nicely. And these are gonna get inked up with our obsidian pigment ink. I love this ink so much because it's great for these fine little details in stamps like this but it's also really great for stamps that have large surface area with a large stampable area and i flip the flip plate over place it back into position i'm just going to apply some pressure wherever i have a stamp just like you would with other stamp platforms if for some reason there's a spot that doesn't get stamped or inked properly i can definitely go back put this in position again and I can stamp again. So there's one little area right there in the corner that I see I missed, and now I've got it. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a few more leaves, and I'll also stamp the other poinsettia so that we can do some stenciling and then die cut these out. And now you can see that all of the elements are stamped out. We have two sets of the leaves and one of each poinsettia. I also went ahead and stamped out warm winter greetings and this is also going to be die cut out. Now I'd like to do some stenciling with the Linear Life Poinsettias Simple Coloring Stencil. And I'm gonna be using the sticky mat. This is made out of photopolymer, the sticky base on the stamp wheel. And I'm just going to pull this out so I can use it on my cutting mat, just like this, as a surface for my ink blending. So this is another great way to use your stamp wheel is by just using it to hold onto your cardstock and to your stencil. And you can also buy this separately. So if you don't have the stamp wheel or if you want additional sticky mats, you definitely can do that. So I'm gonna grab the first one here. Again, it doesn't matter where I place it down and I'm going to align my stencils. Now, if you're not sure where to align them, you can go ahead here and look at the layering guide on the back. This layering guide is also available on our website and you can 
view it full size, you can zoom in if you're having a hard time seeing it here, or you can even print it out. So definitely check out that resource on our website to see those layering guides. And I'm gonna match up each of the poinsettias, which each of the stencils, and I have my A stamp. So all of our stamps are labeled right here. Oops, can you see that? We have a little A. And then there's etchings on the stencil itself that are going to correspond with each of the letters. So I have here a one, Let's see if I can catch it in the light. Sometimes it's a little tricky, you might need to trust me. Oh, there we go. I think you could see it right there, the A1 and A2 and so on and so on. So I'm going to place this here. Now again, this was designed so that it does not match up perfectly, which makes it great for beginners because you really can't mess this up. So I'll place this down and I think I'm going to grab a gray ink because I want this to be a pretty light card. So let's see. I think I'm gonna go ahead with limestone. If it's a little bit too light, I might go back with some silver stone. And I'm just using one of our mini ink blending tools. Let me zoom you guys in here a little bit. So I just go ahead, swirl the brush on my ink. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that right here. Okay, yeah, I think I might go into the darker Oops, a darker color. So I'm just gonna use the silver stone instead. And you'll see we get a slightly darker shade here. Yeah, I think that's better. So once I move this out of the way, you can see I have just a little bit of color added. I'll go ahead into the next one. I can tell I did get a little cross contamination. You can see this one's more natural gray and this one has a little bit of warmth to it. Um, I don't usually clean my blending brushes often and this is one of the negatives to it. It really doesn't bother me because I'm not so picky with the exact colors, but if you are, you would definitely want to devote one brush to each color family or to each color itself. But I just usually share brushes in any like light toned gray gets the same brush. So I know I used this before with a warmer gray, which is why this one's a little bit warmer and this one's a little bit cooler, but it's just gonna add a little bit of variety. While this is still stuck down, I'm going to go ahead and ink up the centers and I'll do that in a nice yellow tone. So I'll add the next layer here and you'll be able to see how quickly this comes together when you have the stencil. It's really nice to be able to stencil your colors instead of always coloring them in with other mediums. Of course, if you want to grab your alcohol markers or if you want to grab colored pencils or paint, you can absolutely do that as well. Okay, so moving along here. So that's easy just to add that little bit of color in the center. And this was fresh lemon ink. And then for my greens, let's go ahead with bamboo. This is very old and ripped, well-loved ink pad here. I love the tropical forest colors. And then each of these leaves has its own center as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead in and ink them up. Oops. And then I'll do the same step on the other card, I mean, on the other panel. Oops. This is gonna be die cut out, so I'm not really worried about my little snafu there. Make sure to stick this down to the mat this time.
Now that I have these all colored in, I'm going to grab the coordinating die set and I'm going to start adhering these down with a little bit of satin masking tape. So this is a low tack adhesive masking tape and it is excellent for adhering down die cuts. It has a similar amount of tack to it as a washi tape, but of course is not as expensive as using a decorative tape. I'm just gonna put some pieces there. And I do reuse these pieces. So after I'm done die cutting, I usually just stick them to the side of my desk and I'll just keep reusing them until they run out of stick. Now, if you don't have the coordinating die set, of course you could fussy cut these flowers, but it is definitely more convenient to have the dies. Remember, I'm gonna have to go twice through because I do have to use each of the leaf dies twice. Oops, that one goes here, because I cut two of each. And here are all of my die cut pieces along with the panel that we created earlier. Now I'm not creating a full card yet. I usually just create a front panel and then I can store it easily. And then when I'm ready to send the card, I'll adhere it to a folded card base, usually out of 110 pound cardstock. Now I feel like I need to bring a little bit more color into this. So I'm actually gonna take another piece of cardstock and I'm going to ink blend a little bit of yellow ink onto this piece. So the reason why I'm doing that is because I already used yellow on this card. So I think it'll be a great chance to bring that yellow tone back in. So here is the fresh lemon ink. And I'm gonna go straight across and ink some of this color right up here. And I'm going to be cutting two strips from this, so I don't want it too thin. Um, I'm not worried about the color being completely saturated because once I cut the strips, you won't notice if there's a little area that's a little bit lighter than the rest. And if for some reason you do, it just adds some great variety and interest. Okay, so once I have this area good to go, I'm going to go ahead and cut two thin strips. Okay, and now I'm ready to assemble everything. I did cut the strips about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to start by adhering these just like this to my card. Now, if you want to use liquid adhesive, you definitely can because this surface is kind of bumpy. I am instead going to use some foam tape. This is our instant dimension foam tape, and I'm just going to cut some little pieces from it that I can use on these strips. So I'll start just by cutting a little bit here. Let's see if we get it to focus. And since the strips are fairly thin, I'm going to cut through the center of them. I'll put one on each side here. And then I'll do the same thing with the other piece. So I'm not really measuring where I'm putting this, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But I think about an inch from the bottom is gonna look great here. So I'll use my grid mat to help that. And the foam tape sticks so well to this um, embossed background. But like I said, if you didn't want this much dimension, you can definitely adhere it with some liquid adhesive, like a strong glue. This one I'm just going to put a little bit higher up.
So now I have everything adhered. And again, you can see we have a couple of layers of dimension. So where I had a single layer of foam tape um, and versus where I have a double layer of foam tape, like on that greeting and on these outer flowers. This one is just a single layer. And then all of my leaves I adhered directly. And I did just use the uh, glue tape that we sell and it seems to do a great job even on that textured background. Now you can leave all of the overhang here as is, but I'm gonna cut them off just so that my card can fit in a regular envelope and go through the mail just like this. So I am gonna trim all these pieces off, but if you are hand delivering your card, you absolutely could just go ahead and leave the overhang. You wouldn't wanna leave it on the bottom, however, just because then your card wouldn't be able to stand up but this is the first completed card. You can see we have a lot of texture and this is one way that you can use the festive greenery background with just having the embossing, just like that. So for the second card, I'm just going to be grabbing the festive greenery stencil set. And I'm not using it with the coordinating 3D embossing folder. Now, if you want another way to use this set, um, I do have a few suggestions that I'll just briefly go through. So one of the things that I think would be really beautiful is if you inked up the embossing folder, so you would open it up and if you would like the background to be inked and then have the leaves and berries white, you would put the ink on this flat side. Okay, so I can feel that the background is raised and then all of the other elements are indented. So what happens is when you put your cardstock in, you ink this side and close it up. You're gonna end up with an inked background and then you have these white leaves and berries. Then, if you want to, you can either leave it alone or go in with the stencil, which matches up perfectly with it, and you can maybe ink up the berries and leave the leaves white, or you can ink up the leaves, leave the berries white, or you can ink up both, and you'll have this great background. So that's another way that you can use this, or you can do just like what we did before on a plain piece of cardstock and then ink up the different elements that you want. So that's kind of a bonus way of how you can use these together. And like I said, for the second card, I just wanna show you what you can do with the stencil on its own because there are etchings that are going to help you with alignment. So what I've done is I've made sure that each stencil is facing right side up. So I have the Altenew ampersand in the top left corner there with number one. And then I have stencil number two, followed by stencil number three. There you go. And if you wanted to use the layering guide, you can, but like I said, there are etchings on each of these layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this dot layer. So this is the number one stencil. And I'm going to place it anywhere I want actually onto my card panel, which I did place onto the base or the sticky mat of the stamp wheel. But I'm just gonna go and see where I have maybe a nice cluster so I'm gonna put this over to the right-hand side. And I think I'm gonna ink it just about here. And the reason why I'm looking at those berries is because, maybe I'll raise this up a little bit more. I wanna make sure that I have some interest on both sides of my card panel because I'm going to be covering up a lot of what's in the center and I wanna make sure that these can be seen coming off the edge. So I know if there are berries here, there are also clusters of leaves in the same area. Now I'm going to just press down the edges of the stencil and grab a blending tool. And for the berries, I'm gonna use pink. And the pink that I selected is Pinkalicious. And this will be a really fun and fresh color combo. I really like this color combination for um, holiday cards because I'm going to be using Lagoon as the greens and I feel like it's just a little bit different than the typical red and green that a lot of people see around the holidays. And what's so funny is that we recently taught a 
Cozy Comfort Retreat, and that was in October. And one of the instructors, Carissa Wiley, used this similar color palette. And I was telling her, I'm like, this is like one of my favorite non-traditional holiday color palettes. Because it's unexpected, but it still looks festive and fresh at the same time. I noticed that a lot of like mid-century, like 1950s, going into the 1960s, a lot of their um, cards and you know, illustrations that you may see from that time use a similar color palette. Now I will just set this aside. I will clean it off later with just a damp cloth and that will come right up all of that ink. And now I'm going to go into stencil number two. And what I'm going to try to do is line up these etched berries. Let me go and see if I could get the light to catch it. There you can see them down here. The etched berries are going to line up with the berries that I've already inked. Now it might be a little bit tough for you to see at this top down angle, but it's quite easy for me to see it here as I line everything up. So now I know that the stencil number two is in the right position and I'll grab another mini blending brush and that Lagoon ink. And if you want to vary things, um, you can definitely create a gradient with your inking. So sometimes I might start with a lighter color in the same color family on one side of the card panel and then blend it over to a darker one on the other side. And I would do that with each layer and you'll get like a really cool gradient. But remember, I'm going to be covering up some of this center area and revealing some of the center area as well, which you'll see as I add some die cutting to this card, but I didn't want there to be too much variety in the background because I want everything in the foreground to really stand out. So that's why I'm keeping my inking just pretty standard. Now, again, these are my favorite blending tools, this mini size, but if you wanted to use the larger one to get through this in one swipe, you would have a more consistent result. So the reason why I like using these, and maybe I can zoom you in just so you can see a little bit better, is there are some areas that are darker and some areas that are lighter because I'm varying the pressure as I blend each of the leaves and I feel like it gives a more organic result. But if I wanted a really crisp and clean uniform look, I would use a larger ink blending tool. And that's why it's great we have so many different ones because you can choose the one that's right for the look that you're going for or whatever style you tend to prefer. Now, once I peel this off, you'll see how beautiful that looks right here. And then I'll be going in with this last layer. And once again, we're using the berries as reference points. So again, you can see in the light here, all those etched circles, and I'm just going to line them up with the ones that have already been, been inked. So you're using the same references on each layer, which I find is a lot easier because you don't have to like try to decipher what you're supposed to be lining up next. It's just the same layer. So we're going back to that berry layer and just using that as our reference. Now for the little sprigs and branches, I'm going to be using some paper bag ink. This is another uh, all to do classic, I'd say, because it was one of our early ink releases and it's still a great brown tone. I think it suits a lot of different color combinations really nicely. And you could absolutely do this in black. I think it would beautiful, be beautiful if you inked over it with embossing ink and then added on some embossing powder. Now, sometimes we get the question, if I'm going to be using an embossing folder and I'm going to be stenciling, which do I do first? And you definitely want to do the embossing first. And the reason for that is when you run the paper through or the cardstock through the embossing folder through your die cut machine, what you're doing is compressing areas of that cardstock and pushing it into all of the 3D elements. And when that's happening, it's almost like distorting the cardstock in a way and different areas are getting pushed into different spots in the folder. So if you were to try to do the stenciling first and then run it through your 
embossing folder, you'd probably have a pretty good result, but there might be some areas that may not match up because of the way that it distorts the cardstock as it's getting pushed into that 3D shape. So I really prefer if you're going to do both to do the embossing first, and then you can see where everything lines up. You don't have to worry about the etchings at all because you will easily see where each part fits in with the embossing design. Okay, so here is that final third layer. Again, I will set this aside to be cleaned later, but you can see how beautiful this is. Let me just quickly peel it off my sticky mat here. And I just love how fun and festive that is, but just with like, as I said before, a really fresh color palette. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is set this aside and I'm going to pull out another piece of cardstock. I don't need this right now. I will be pulling out my mat later with the stamp wheel. And I'm gonna be getting the Joy die set. Now the Joy die set also comes with a coordinating coloring stencil and you can add stripes or solid fills to these letters. And there's also a coordinating hot foil plate that you can also use with or without the die or with or without the stencils. But I'm just going to be using the die right now. You can see here that we have two pieces. This is the base right here. So it's kind of like the shadow image. And then we have the joy itself, which is more detailed and that's where you get the cutouts of the letters. So I'm going to actually use the detailed one. Now for my card design, let me flip this over. Looks like I had a little smudge on the other side. With this card design, you could use both and you would do the larger one first and then you would actually cut this out of the fallout piece, okay? Now for me, I'm just going to stick with this one. So I'm going to place it here and center it as best as I can, but I actually don't have to center it perfectly because I will be trimming off the sides a little bit. And maybe now you can see why I wanted the sides to have some interesting elements in them because that's gonna be revealed and the part behind the Joy die cut is going to be revealed as well. I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of that satin masking tape. These are the pieces that I used in my last card. I told you I love to reuse them. I'm gonna try to keep this straight. So like I said, I don't have to have it centered perfectly, but I would like to have it straight because if it's a little askew, it's gonna look off when I design the final card. So again, just reusing these pieces. And I think I actually might um, move the tape a little bit. Sometimes when you get a lot of tape over the die and you have a tight cutting sandwich on your die cutting plates, sometimes it can impress a little bit of that into your cardstock, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna be a little bit more cautious here where I'm putting the tape, and that should be good. All right, so let me just run this through my die cut machine. And when this comes out, you'll see that we have this negative piece, which we will be using. And I have these fallout letters, which we are also going to be using um, just for the center of the O. So I don't need the other pieces here. But of course, if you wanted to use some of those as well, you can. But to me, the one I wanted to hang on to was the O. And I'm just going to use some of this tape to uh, get rid of some of those other fallout pieces. You can also use a stylus. Um, I just kind of use the tape sometimes because it's usually something that I have right next to me while I'm doing my die cutting. And then let's just grab these last little pieces here and then we'll pull this out. It is very delicate, so you just wanna be a little bit careful. And look how cool that is, it is so pretty. Now before I trim off the sides and we start assembling the card panel, I am just going to stamp on a sentiment. So let me bring back my stamp wheel. And if you remember, we had the sticky mat out of the stamp wheel, that photopolymer base. So I will be putting that back in. 
And you can see how great of a tool this is. Let me zoom you out a little bit. How great of a tool this is because I can just put this in and out whenever I need, depending on what it is that I am creating. And you'll see it just pops back into position. And now I'm going to place this in the center. Again, it doesn't have to be centered. You can always use our alignment stencils if you want a perfectly centered piece of cardstock. And then I like to do this just to hold in place, but I'm a little crazy when it comes to stamping sentiments. And I like to use an acrylic block for my sentiments. Um, it's just something I've always done. So I'm going to grab this little acrylic block here and I'll choose one of the sentiments that are from a small stamp set that coordinates with the Joy products that I just showed you. And we have the Joyful Greetings. And this is a three by four stamp set. You could buy this on its own because you do have two Joy options here, or you can use this to combine with the Joy die or the hot foil or the stencil. The stencil could be used on its own too. We're really trying to give lots of options with the different products so you could mix and match. And if your budget doesn't allow for you to buy all of them at once, you can buy one and use it until you're ready to add one of the other complimentary products. And I'm going to go with May the Season Bring You right over here. And I think that'll be really sweet with this holiday card. And we even get some inspiration on the back of our mini cards as well. So we really think it's important to give you a jump start on your creativity because sometimes creativity comes natural and other times you need a little boost. You gotta bring that mojo some other way so you don't even have to turn on your computer or your phone. You can just jump right on to the insert that's there and then find some inspiration that way. And I'm going to be stamping this right up here. I hope I'm gonna get it straight because anytime I film, the camera is right here on top. And you guys know the best place to be when you're stamping a sentiment and wanna get it straight is right on top. So I'm gonna be coming at a little angle here. So we'll see how it goes if I can get it straight. But yeah, I just like the control of holding an acrylic block. So it's kind of an old school way for me to stamp sentiments. I love stamping everything else with the stamp wheel but for sentiments, I do bring out my acrylic block. I'm just trying to check in the viewfinder to see if this looks pretty straight because I certainly can't tell from my angle. I'm just gonna go for it. That looks great. And then I am going to trim down the sides and how much you trim off on the sides is completely up to you. Um, if you trim more off, then you will obviously see more of this pattern on the sides. Um, I'm probably going to trim about a quarter of an inch. So let me just do that off camera here and I'll bring it right back. And here is what that panel looks like all trimmed down. And now it is time to assemble the card. So I will be using a lot of foam tape for this. You guys know how much I love my foam tape. And here's how this is going to get set up. So I'm going to pop the front panel up with some foam tape. I'll have that centered like this. And now you can see why I wanted to have some interesting things on the side over here. And then I will also place this joy on. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to have it all popped up at the same level. So one layer of foam like this, kind of like um, just pretty simple, basic or if I want to pop up the joy a little bit higher up so that I have more dimension, just like I did with the other card. I had a couple of layers of dimension. The only thing that makes that a little bit more tricky is how thin these areas are. And I think getting two layers of foam behind them, like stacked up is gonna be challenging. So I'm gonna stick with the one layer approach, but if I wanted to get that same look without having to cut all these little itty bitty pieces of tape, then I would just die cut this joy about five times and then stack them together. And then I can mount it all together here and you would get that varying levels. And it's a little bit more of a sturdy way to do that. So that will be a different option. All right, let me flip this over and I'll start applying some tape. See, I did get some ink smudges on the other side. <laughs> 
Don't we all, you know? Okay, so um, just give me a second and I will go ahead and put some foam tape back here and I'll show you what it looks like when we pop this on. So what I did to adhere them together like this is I just made sure to put some adhesive that overlapped the thin areas and then the negative panel that we're using, that large white panel. So you still have all of the details of the joy and you can see that outline even though it is all one layer. And then I also put some adhesive on the outer edges. Now what I'm gonna do is just peel back all the ones on the inside first, and then I like to get the placement on that, and once I do, I'll go back and peel off the outer pieces of tape. So sometimes if I peel them all off, it's like you're committing to getting the placement perfect, and then if you wanna move it, it's like next to impossible. So doing it this way, I feel like I have a little more success because I won't put any pressure in the center, but I can put pressure on the sides here. So I could push this down right here and the release paper has not been removed. So I know I won't have any problems there. And once this looks centered, which it does, I can press down all of the center and now I can just kind of sneak in and peel off the rest of the release paper, just kind of going around the outer edge. And that just always makes it a little bit easier for me. Now, again, I am a very clean and simple card maker and I know that not everybody is. So if you wanna step this design up some more, I think it'd be really beautiful if you added some enamel dots or some sequins or even like a stripe of glitter tape across the bottom. But my clean and simple heart is totally happy with how this looks just like this. It is definitely a card that I'm going to be excited to send to someone that I love. So this will be a really nice one to add to my collection of holiday cards that I'm going to mail out this season. So between our two cards, I showed you two ideas on how to use the festive greenery 3D embossing folder and simple coloring stencil set. But again, you can use them together. That's the magic. So take these two ideas and then go to the next level, do your embossing and add the stenciling on top. So you really can do so much and I really can't wait to see what you create. Thank you again to Jennifer McGuire for allowing me to kind of take over over here on your channel. This has been such a joy being here and getting to share these cards with you using some products from Altenew's October release. I hope you guys have a wonderfully crafty day. Bye. Thank you so much, Jen. I hope you all enjoyed that. I think it's really fun to see the way that a stamp designer creates and all the additional ideas that she has to share. I thank Jen for being here and I encourage you to check out the supplies that she used below in my YouTube description and other supplies that Altenew has to offer. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other related videos if you're looking for more techniques. I thank you for spending this time with us today and I hope to see you again soon in another video.